All right, you guys, I got a spice for you today. My boy Tim Bailey, he got top four at ARG Columbus, the last ARG that just happened. And this man did it with Block Dragon BA. That's right, Block Dragon BA. I'm just like, what? It's crazy. I didn't even know it was a deck. He explained it all to me and it's insanity. And I know all you BA fans out there are gonna wanna see this. I actually heard about this deck from uh, Team Karibos. I always listen to their podcast and what was crazy was they were talking about someone who, you know, played the ARG, got top four, played uh, Block Dragon and Burning Abyss. You know, I thought nothing of it because, you know, I don't play Burning Abyss. And, you know, no one really is paying too much attention to BA, which I guess was mistake number one. And yeah, he went in, he got second after Swiss and then got top four overall. It's actually insane. What I have for you guys today is his actual live deck profile that was recorded. Uh, on his channel uh, ENT collectibles I'm gonna have a link down below be sure you check them out and uh, yeah he explains a lot of the stuff if you guys have any questions be sure to just you know put them in the comments below you can also like uh, go over to his channel and of course subscribe and then you know just ask him any personal questions he gave me a lot of good details on it and I mean I'm very impressed like it's actually crazy to see you know not only burning abyss do something because I feel like burning abyss will just pop up and do something any format because you guys know Dante is just never gonna die so it's just nuts but I noticed that uh, block dragon and I know like that's like insanity the only time I've seen blog dragon for me has been what the Gemini FTK so basically the what you'll notice about the deck is that there's a block dragons and there's like an earth engine and all that stuff and it just makes it way more like consistent more explosive and there's just so many things you can do you'll see in the side deck there's a lot of just really good coverage uh, for things and it's also a hydrolander deck which is something that uh, you guys are probably familiar with I know Thomas Rose probably the most renowned BA player him and jo Joshua oysters they were the ones that played BA so much they played the hydrolander build and we haven't seen hydrolander BA in a really long time so it's not only hydrolander but it's hydrolander block dragon like random stuff, random one ofs that, you know, may not make sense, but you watch a deck profile, you'll definitely uh, learn something from it. And yeah, I just want to shout out my boy, uh, Tim Bailey for this. Uh, thank you for sending it to me, bro. I really appreciate it. Thank you for giving me the in-depth, uh, you know, analysis on it, which also I have probably somewhere in the, in the description and one of the comments, if you guys want to read that as well. In case there's any other questions, like I said, you can just direct them to him. And yeah, so out with further ado, let's get into it. Hello, YouTube. We here with... Hey, what's up? It's Tim Bailey. Uh, TR Bailey 823, or as I've changed the name to ENT Collectibles. Um, I just got top four at ARG um, Columbus, uh, second after Swiss, and I played Block Dragon BA. So let's just get into that deck list. Okay? Um, three Mathematician, it's the best starter card in the deck. Um, and you can just send all sorts of different options from it. Uh, three Block Dragon, because you want to see the card for sure. Uh, three Gallus, uh, three Bell. Uh, Bell is an earth. Uh, Bell is an earth tuner, uh, so that makes it's an earth monster. So it's a big deal. So you can remove it off block dragon and stuff. I don't play any other hand traps, and um, it is because I also play three orbital hydrolander. So I just try to make sure that hydrolander is live. Um, and then I realized in testing, was like we just need to like have a hand trap that does the same thing. So like. I did try like playing around with like one copy of this, one copy of that, and the deck ran smoother uh, without hand traps at all. So when I added these in, as as just the three, it was also level three. So in a pinch, like you could you could actually play Yu-Gi-Oh with it if you need to. Um, and then for the targets for Block Dragon, of course, besides Block Dragon itself, uh, two Gigantes and two Rock Spirits. Gigantes is a heavy storm if it's destroyed by battle. Uh, this card gains 200 attack during your opponent's battle phase, so that literally is completely irrelevant because this is 2019. Um, you just, your level 4 monsters, you just remove, play two of each so that way it doesn't clunk too bad for the orbital hydrolander. Um, and then I play one tour guide and one fiendish rhino warrior. A lot of people are going to be like, why do you only play one fiendish rhino warrior? And it's actually very simple as to why I only play one. Um, as you saw, a lot of the cards that are once per turn, there's only one copy of in my deck, as you will see as we keep going. So, uh, this card at multiple copies in your hand could brick you, whereas if you just drew one, you could play. But really, you just want to send it off the first Cherubini to get an additional Earth Monster target, and that's it. You might levy it back for plays later. And then, a whole bunch of one-of cards. So, one Psychic Tracker. It can only be summoned once. Uh, so... We're not trying to get cards get stuck. One Psychic Wielder, again. We're not trying to get cards stuck. Uh, one C Archiver. 
So a lot of people don't know what this card does. Um, if a monster is summoned to a zone of link points to, I can special summon this from the graveyard, or I can special summon it from my hand. It doesn't have to go to where link arrow is pointed to. So one of the cool kind of things you can do uh, is you could summon Tour Guide and make it chain link one, and then this card be chain link two because they're both uh, optional effects. Um, so it allows you to kind of chain block things. It doesn't come up very often, but it can. Uh, one Agent Sabers. Um, it's just a really good card in this deck. Uh, Giant Rex. Getting free cards is always awesome in Yu-Gi-Oh! And with Block Dragon banishing cards from the grave, you get to do that. And then I play one of each Burning Abyss monster. One Skarm, one Graph, one Sir, one Libic, one Calcab, one Dragig, one Rubik, one Cagna, one Alec, one Barbar, and one Farfa. Um, you play it this way so that way uh, you don't end up with multiple copies in the grave for Hydrolander. Uh, and one of the cool things is like people will ask, like, don't you need more than one Farfa? But you really don't, because in the opening play you use Saryuja. So if you drew Farfa, you just grab it back off Dante and then you put it to the bottom of the deck with Saryuja, or you Sekka slide it back. So it's really not that big of a deal. And then just three spells. Three, Sekka's Light. Who would have guessed it? Alright, so let's do the extra deck. The extra deck, uh, one Cherubini, one Underclock Taker, one Nightmare Cerberus, one Nightmare Phoenix, one Nightmare Unicorn, one Topologic uh, Trishbania, uh, one Suryuja, one Mech uh, Night Crusadia Avermax, one Boral Sword, and then for the Xyz I play one Leviator, two Dante, one Abyss Dweller, Beatrice, and Pilgrim. So people are probably asking, like, how in the world did you do well with this deck? So a lot of people don't really understand what this deck can do. Um, pretty much every turn one, you, as long as you don't like brick really bad, which is kind of hard to do, honestly, in this deck, because everything's so extendy and one ofs and stuff. Most games I end with Beatrice Dweller in a rank four or in a Link 4. So the Link 4 is either going to be Avermax or Saryuja. It all depends uh, on a few different situations. If I get an additional extender, it becomes the Saryuja because you get more cards to try to find Orbital Hydrolander. And then Orbital Hydrolander is obviously a bonus. So there's a lot of games where you end with that and Orbital Hydrolander. So obviously that's a couple of disruptions with Abyss Dweller. And that's really, really hard for a lot of people to get through. Um, in fact, I won several games where people had like impermanence and like double called by the grave you know, going second, trying to break my board, and they still fit it. Because cards like Avermax are just too good, uh, and Dweller and Beatrice are just ridiculous. I mean, it's just, th this, deck's are kind of, this deck's kind of insane. Um, I mean, it's not as insane as, like, what the Thunder Dragon deck does, um, but this deck is so, so undervalued. Uh, so for my side deck, I borrowed these. So I had three Droll and Mockbird, three Electric Virus, uh, one of each of these kaijus, the wind, earth, and water. Uh, and then the only spells and trap, uh, the only traps I play anywhere, I play three eradicator and three trap trick. Uh, this is basically for sky striker and other like trap decks. So like, or other decks that play traps. Um, but yeah, the, these were just like, gotcha card against strikers, it's the hardest matchup for the deck. Um, so yeah, so that's my deck list. Um, please like and subscribe. And any shout outs? Any shout outs? Uh, yeah, Justin, Justin Singh and I really talked about this a couple days before. Like, hey, like, how should I like polish up the side deck and stuff? And you know, we were either gonna do like a spell canceler thing, but then just like this card is too good. Like, Eradicator being at six is ridiculous. <laughs> that card should be limited to one, and. Uh, that would mean that you can only play one, and then this wouldn't be the case. Then we play spell cancels. But yeah, this this is just too good. So that was really the big thing that Justin and I conversed about. But we talked a little bit about this deck. Um, I tried a couple different variants, but yeah, this deck is honestly really, really good, really underrated. Uh, shout out to all my friends that I'm here at the event with, and shout out to Chris for recording this for me. I appreciate that. And uh, again, you got any questions? Leave them in the comments below. That's it. All right, guys, peace. One last thing I want to mention, you guys. So, yes, we changed the channel name for the final time. 
Slim with YGO, and I know everyone's like, why? We've already been through this 7 billion times. I've had like 7 billion different names, but the reason why is uh, I talked to my friend DZ, and he told me that when you type in Slim, of course, into YouTube, you're gonna get anything and everything that isn't me. I'm not a rapper or any of that, so that doesn't work. However, if you type in Slim and YGO next to it, because you know Yu-Gi-Oh! I pop right up and that's why we did it. I think I already mentioned it in a post in the community tab, but I wanted you guys to know this and I promise, promise, promise you guys this will be the final name change. So yeah, that's the explanation for that. Just thank you for all the support over the years and here's to another amazing season.